Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 353. Larry here. And Anthony here. And you're back. Welcome back. Welcome I am back. back. Thank you so much. Happy to be back and very sorry about last week. I know that was a last minute cancellation on my part, but uh, you know, I, I was in a place where I couldn't record. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> uh, but yet a place where probably half the stuff comes from. Um, uh, but that what is happened- not true, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, we're happy to have you back, though, even though you lied to uh, the tens of hundreds of people who listen. I totally lied. I totally. But look, I brought back this fun Monopoly money with me. Um, Did you? Oh, <laughs> wow. A, look, guess the country. Oh. <laughs> I've got <laughs> I've got three countries of money in here. Do you really? Oh, I think I recognize yeah. one. No, yeah. U.S. is not one of them, I don't think. No, U.S. is not. Is not oh, in wow. So. That's in, That's cool. Yeah. Like, so, are you keeping those or did you forget to? No, to no, no. I kept them for posterity because like, yeah. they really they have cool stuff. Like, this is Hong Kong. Like, look at Hong Kong money. Oh, wow. Look at that. Is that it's, is that an abacus? That's an abacus. Yeah. So I got some Hong Kong money. I got some China money. Ah, with, there you go. With that guy on it. Yep. I don't know who he is. I forgot his name. I don't know. Let's uh, get them and there. then I got this really cool Malaysian money. I just like the color. The color is fun. That, like the I always, the orange. Right? I That is true Monopoly money. Yeah. It's like... um, It really I think, is. I think Euros are like that, I think. Yeah, Euros are like that, too. Yeah. Um, It's just... Yeah, it's just really interesting to see the different <laughs> kinds of money uh, right. around the world. So, uh, yeah, so uh, I did my Asia World Tour. Very uh, cool. Not, not for the podcast. But, <laughs> Who but, are we? Yeah, exactly. But fun was had. Nevertheless, uh, welcome home. Yes. Thank you. We're Very able, happy I mean, to be home. And, and, you know, obviously you were there for business, but were you able yes. to do anything? I'm not saying you brought anything home unless you brought home one of those Danishes or whatever. But, Ooh, yeah, those were right? good. Mm, well, mm. look amazing. Yeah. I think I gained 10 pounds from just eating at bakeries. <laughs> like I like we, we didn't even go out to eat dinner anywhere. I just went to like the bakery and I was like, all right, I'm just going to stuff my face. <laughs> uh, Done. Bake goods. Yeah. Bake goods. Um, so, you know, as a, yeah, well, as always, whenever I travel, I try to find mm-hmm. um, a, a, a game store to go to. That's not, you know, um, a chain. But then again, yeah. when I travel to these places, none of them are. Yeah. True. Um, I struck out in Malaysia. It was, uh, it was hard to, uh, I really couldn't go anywhere because our hotel was halfway up a mountain. So a bit remote, a bit yeah, remote. I was, I was a little, re- I was a little remote halfway up a mountain. Didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it was like an hour to the city. Halfway down the stairs. Yeah, it, was, it was an hour to Kuala Lumpur. So I couldn't get there. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, and then, um, and then when I was in, um, when I was in Hong Kong, um, Hong Kong and China, similar situation, I just couldn't get anywhere, but okay. Singapore, ah, Singapore, Singapore uh, delivered. Singapore delivered. I managed to go. I managed to find a store about 15 minutes away from the uh, from the hotel. Okay. And uh, it, and I dragged my boss with me. So that was fun. <laughs> As you will now be written up. <laughs> yes. So um, but found this really cool store. Um, the name of it was Retro Nuts. N-U-T-Z. OK, ah, I got to have the Z. Uh, and had a really awesome conversation with uh, with the guy who runs the store there, Philip Lee. Okay. Um. Great. Great store. It was in a. Um. It was in a. Uh, the thing about like. Um. Thing about Asia when you go to like uh like malls or places there mm-hmm. they'll have like themed malls if that makes sense. So in other words, like this okay. loca- this location that I went to was four or five floors of electronic stores. Oh wow! Like every store was an electronic store, and we're talking like. Every type of thing you can think of. So in other words, like there was a store stel- selling like stereo equipment, like old school. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Equipment. Okay. Like, so. I think know, I just Googled this place too. Yeah. So, um, and I have some pictures. I'll post them on the, okay. I'll post them on our pages. Oh, here we go. Singapore. Yeah. Simlim yeah, uh, Square. Yeah. Simlim oh. Square is where okay. I went to. Okay. I'll um, post and it. And then while we're talking, I'll have some yep. pictures. And then there. Retro Nuts, here's the business card. Looks yes. Familiar. I just saw one of those uh, Game yeah. & Watches. That's so, awesome. Did a Game & Watch. So um, yeah, uh, the guy, like we wound up talking for like a good half an hour, much to the, the dismay of my boss who was just standing there. <laughs> um, but awesome. uh, yeah, we had, some, we had some really good conversations talking about stuff and no joke, like I was picking stuff out that I wanted to buy because there were so many cool things. And every time I pointed at something, he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, that's just for display. That's just for display. That's just for display. We actually have four things for sale. (laughs) Basically. But um, but he had some really, really like cool stuff in there. He had a copy. He had a copy of um, Little Samson for NES. Original? Uh, Original. 
original like like he yeah he told me like he was explaining to me how like he's a big time collector he doesn't even he said he goes i don't even play games anymore he's like i just like to collect <laughs> okay and then obviously he has stuff in the store mm-hmm. but um he had a bunch of stuff that was sealed never opened oh my he God. had a uh i pointed directly to uh an original rob oh wow and i said how much is that he said he said that's not for sale. He's like, it's brand brand new in box, never open. Oh my gosh! Like, oh my I wonder God. if he's getting these like imported or if they were like from there. I have no idea how yeah. he's getting them, but it was just amazing. Um, so I spent a good amount of time in the store, wandered around. Really, I was fawning over everything. Um, he had a lot of game and watches. That I see really that cool. on. I'm actually I'm on his Instagram as well mm-hmm. uh, at at Retro Nuts R E T R O N U T Z Phil Lee. Mm-hmm. So we'll definitely yeah, give so, him a shout uh, out and follow. He, yeah, absolutely. And I told him I told him I would uh, give him a shout out on our show. Um, but anyway, had a great conversation with him, talked games for a long time. He had a lot of consoles there. Mm-hmm. And I really, I really wish I had room in my suitcase. I, in fact, I had to buy a suitcase while I was traveling. <laughs> nice. Um, because I just not that I bought a lot of stuff, but during like my work trips, people were giving me things to take home with me. Oh, that's cool. And I just and I just ran out of room and I'm like, crap, I gotta buy another suitcase. So then <laughs> once I bought another suitcase, I started loading it up. Um there's a wonderful photo here on his Instagram uh of a gentleman purchasing both an and uh US and a Japanese uh virtual boy oh. in box. Oh, so there there were losers there too. Well, <laughs> All right. So um so yeah, Very no, good. had a had a great collection, was definitely worth the time to go there and talk to him. Mm-hmm. As usual, when I go to these places, like I'm not necessarily prepared for what I'm going to buy. Uh, who so, knew, right? Who knew? Yeah, no but offense, because but you, well, first off, yeah, I didn't know if I was gonna find a place. Yeah. And then second, it's like, you know, once I get there, it's like, what exactly am I looking for? Because whatever I'm gonna get there is gonna be you know, an import of some kind, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So, so while I wandered around, I happened to see something and I was like, oh, you know what? I go, this could be fun to get here because I don't have it. Uh, and it was on my list of some uh, of things to buy. So I got myself the Neo Geo Mini. Nice. While I was there. So that's I, a beaut. Yeah. So um, I haven't opened it yet. It's still in the plastic. Is there like, if you look on the side, like a picture of the actual console, is it like, does it have like yeah. a color scheme to it? Yeah. It's a, it's the blue, white, and red Neo Geo. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take the plastic off. Ah, oh, here we go. Could it be? Because you have yours, right? Yes. Yeah. So my, this is, this is a little different. It's a little Yeah. There were different. like, there were like two or three different versions, especially depending on where you were buying it. There yeah. was like North. I don't think these were North American technically, but like Japanese or Singapore. Oh, you know what? Is this um? Did I get the? Uh, it looks like I got the SNK 40th anniversary version. Was that a Which, different version? I, it might have been different. I think mine was just regular. Yeah, mine doesn't say anything about. Like, does yeah, yours like on the bo- on the box here? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, so... if you look at the the marquee, your marquee might be a little different than mine. Uh, okay. Well, I'm looking at the picture on the side. You see the bottom is red, which yours yes, is then not. yours is definitely. Yeah, yours is definitely. Uh, That's yeah. cool. That's well, cool. I'll take the opportunity since I did buy it. I want to. I want to play mine. Yeah. You know what's funny though? The, the it, it runs off a of USB C. Yes. Um, and I really the the most that whatever came in that box when I bought mine. Uh, yep. is the is the wire gets the most because I use it for charging everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, because oh, it's super this is long. Very, it's very easy to unbox. Yeah, there you go. Out. Oh, yours is uh, totally, yeah, yours is definitely yeah, mine, a color scheme. Look at that. Yeah, check that out. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Oh, I so, like oh, and you know what? I don't have, oh, are they stickers? Uh, I don't They're remember. Stickers. They're stickers. I don't remember putting mine on. Well, there's a little box in here. Oh, little I guess white maybe box. I did then. Maybe I did yeah. do it. Hold on, let me take a look and see what stickers I have. Yep. What games? What games are on your knee? Oh the God, help me! I haven't turned this bad boy on a long time. No, 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 no. The on the sticker. Oh, 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 on the on the marquee. Uh, oh God. Uh, I also need maybe for Christmas Santa will bring me a light. Uh, Metal Slug Two, Oop. Samurai Showdown Two, King of Fighters ninety seven. Okay. And something else I can't tell. All right, so yeah, mine's a little different. Mine's got Metal Slug Two. R, what's RB2? I don't even know what RB2 remember. is. Um, something special. Okay. <laughs> and then King, uh, the King of Fighters 98. Ah, so, 98. Yeah, no, yours yeah. is definitely a little different than mine. Yep. Uh, that's a little well, very different but, than mine. Yeah. So really cool. Oh, and I guess there's a sticker for the uh, for the uh, for the panel. Oh, for the sides? One well, no, for the front. Uh, for where the oh, man, did is. I throw away stickers? Did you? <laughs> 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had this for like maybe a year and a half now, two years. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so uh, there's a little there's a sticker to put on here for the controller. Oh, so I guess you I missed don't out on have that. that. Wait, does yours have engraved on it though, like A, B, C, and D? Uh, no, they're on the. It's on the sticker. Oh, then maybe maybe I didn't get a sticker for that then. Okay. Okay. No, it's on the it's on the sticker. Well, since I have it out, I'll put the sticker on. Well, so. now I'm also gonna do a quick search because through the magic of editing, I can I can shorten this. You um. Can. Neo Geo, blah, 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 da, da, da. So I, now the question is, do I have different games? I think you do. That's what I'm trying to pull. Oh, here we go. Uh, what is this? Um, oh, these things came out in 2019, actually. Okay. So there was... Okay. Yours is the Neo Geo Mini Japan Edition. Uh -huh. Mine... Mine... Uh, yeah, mine should be the Neo Geo Mini International Edition. But right, there were actually five that came out different editions yeah that's what the guy was telling me in the yeah. store he there said there were different versions international edition japan edition a christmas edition oh. a samurai showdown edition and a samurai spirits kuroko edition uh yeah because he told me that um when i was in the store he was explaining to me how the original neo geo yeah that came out the neo geo mini he said it's hard to come by now and it's it's like blown up in price oh forget about it yeah the original mini is wicked uh i'm trying to see some of the exclusives you have so you have a game called cyber lip okay uh oh that's pretty cool looks like a beat em up um uh, what else exclusive real bout fatal fury 2 the newcomers oh, uh, no. uh, oh what'd you do you messed it my, up already? yeah my stickers on wrong i did that with one of my um yeah good no, luck taking I, it off no i can't no i can't live with this do you want me to show you the sticker I tried putting on a Genesis cart? Because you'll no. drive all the way down here and change it for me. Nope. Nope. Oh, um, I'll fix it. I will. Oh, my God. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different King of Fighters on yours. Sweet. Uh, 94 through 03. That's cool. I got, uh, whole, I got the whole collection. There you go. Yeah, basically. The Last Blade. Um, Aha. Got it off. Oh, nice. Oh, you got Top Hunter, Roddy and Kathy. That's a good one. So you got some good games on there, some good exclusives. All right, cool. And uh, but nevertheless, very cool. Uh, I messed up the corner of it now. No, I mean like you know from pulling it off. Oh no, I get it. I, I yeah. on Etsy, I had I bought uh, a there you go. sticker. There it is. There we go. That looks that's a beaut. Look at that. That's really cool. Actually, I like the way yours looks, man. Yeah, very nice. Be jealous. Oh, uh, and it, well. I know you well if you want you can, but they sell the they sell uh external controllers Ooh. because you can hook this up to your TV. There's an HDMI port in the back. Oh yeah, that I know, which yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. So I would probably the, the the likelihood is higher that I'll play it on my TV than on this tiny button. <laughs> it is fun though to play that a little bit. So yeah. So uh um, right. so That's anyway, so cool. that was my that was my big purchase abroad. Um cool. and again. A shout out to uh, to Philip at um, Retro Nuts. Yes, Phil Lee at Retro Nuts. Definitely check them out and give them a follow. Yes, definitely a good store to check out. And also, um, uh, Larry, you'll be happy to hear this. Uh, they ship. I was just about to look into see if they do anything like that. They do. They do shipping. Uh, so uh, he's got a page. You can buy stuff online. That's going to be dangerous. Okay. That's going to be pricey. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, all right, cool. Anything else from there? Or that was basically no. Yeah. That, that was that was uh, that was expensive enough. <laughs> so uh, I have one thing to show Especially off. Especially once I did the conversion. <laughs> is, is how is the rate bad? No. Uh, what was Singapore was actually the closest to the U.S. dollar oh, okay. than the other two countries. Well, it was really funny because like everywhere I went. So like in Singapore, in Singapore, um, one Singapore dollar is seventy five cents U.S. Yeah, right now one U.S. dollar is a right. dollar thirty three Singapore. But yeah. my my absolute favorite, I think, was Hong Kong. Um, oh, I think you've one Hong one Hong Kong dollar is thirteen cents. Yeah, so the other way around, one U.S. dollar is seven dollars and eighty cents Hong Kong. That is wild. Yes, <laughs> and similar in Malaysia, where uh, one Malaysian. Dollar is fourteen cents U.S. Malaysia, Malaysia. Here we go. A Malaysian ring it. They ring it. Ring, ring it. Ring it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One U.S. dollars a dollar, four dollars sixty seven ring it. Yep. And so, you went, you went peak too, man. It shot up too when you went there. It did. So you, you, uh, you done yourself good. All right. 
So anyway, yeah, no, really happy with the with the Neo Geo Mini. So that was my that was my great purchase. Honestly, that's purchase. fantastic. Yeah. You're gonna love it. Um, so for me to show off a little bit, actually, I got a friend of mine. Actually, a friend of the show. You know, and Mario. Um, oh, Mario, yes. And his two wonderful daughters actually got me a Christmas present. So I did open it uh, early. Yes, uh, this is awesome because I'm not a huge collector of these. Actually, and this is kind of more up your alley. You might actually have this, but in any event, I love this and I can't wait to play it. Okay. It is. Super Mario Brothers Monopoly. Ooh, very the nice. Classic edition. Yes. So this is the original, like based on the SNES Monopoly. Yes, that's it is really cool. Gorgeous. Look at the the the. the I um, love the pieces. The the tokens. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, Mario, Luigi, uh, uh, uh Super Mushroom, One Up Mushroom, Toad, mm -hmm. Princess, and then I love how the houses are the flags and hotels are the castles. That's really that's awesome. Yes, so I can't wait to try that one out. And that's play cool. It. I have um. Legend well, thank of you, Zelda Mario, Monopoly. and your girls. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I have the Legend of Zelda Monopoly in my uh, closet. <laughs> yes, I thought you had a Mario one too. I thought I saw a Mario. Uh, one. I might have a Mario one. It's so hard to remember. Oh no, no, no! I have um, I have the Super Mario Brothers movie. One. Oh yes, nice. Yeah, awesome. I got the movie one, so cool. yes, I do have a Mario. Very cool. All uh, right, so that's basically yeah. our purchases there. So we done good, done good. Yes, yes um, we did. Something I just wanted to bring Anthony kind of up to speed a little bit. I mean, um, yeah, I've been out. out last week. Yes. So just some things I, really I just kind of want to get your comments on. First of all, this I talked about last week with some people, but I didn't get a chance because unfortunately things got crazy last week. I didn't get a chance to edit as m well as I wanted to. So now I can show off what I was talking about last week. Okay. When I tried booting up my Xbox, which is now working magically, uh, and then I tried putting in, what is this? Capcom Wait, Class. Which Xbox? Oh, the original Xbox. Oh, OG. The original, OG. original Xbox. Yeah. Okay. 2001. The Duke. Yes. The Duke. Uh, I hated that controller. Thank God I got the other one. Uh, <laughs> that was a Cap monster. Capcom Classics Collections, when I tried booting up, and it wouldn't boot up. And then when I looked at the CD. Oh, yes. You talked about that. Oh, oh, I, yes. Where is it? Right there. There it is. This what I not. believe is my first case of disc rot. So, okay. which stinks. Um, have you yeah. come across, have you ever come across anything like that in your collections? Uh, no, I've had, I've had discs, I've had discs go bad on me, but I've never seen the rot on okay. them. So, and I don't, honestly don't know what's caused the issue. Maybe scratches. I, I, I forgot. I was reading into it a little bit. Uh, actually I heard laser discs are actually the most prone to disc rot apparently. Oh, interesting. Um, but thankfully I never owned one, but, um, and a lot of people said it was kind of weird. They never really, they never really heard or came across an Xbox game. Uh, hitting it so and again i don't know if this is true disc rot but either way something's wrong with the disc yeah uh, but luckily it's a disc though that i mean it's not the end of the world i probably have these games on every other system that i own so mm -hmm. it's not the worst thing in the world but still uh yeah. interesting and and i don't know if it spreads like wildfire or a disease or some sort so i'm kind of looking forward no to, I don't as much to check but, but i i did love you posting about it as if the one game that has ever rotted in your collection was the whole reason behind switching to digital <laughs> no but i do remember and i remember this i i can't tell you how long ago it was but it was long ago enough where it, it feels like maybe i want to say mid 2000s maybe i mean it was after mm -hmm. dvds came out and probably a good 10 years after dvds came out you know like properly came out yeah and i remember like a news report talking about this thing called disc rod mm -hmm. and this was decades ago at this point and i remember i'm like oh that's kind of weird that doesn't make sense it's a cd why would it go bad uh especially having music cds for way longer than owning dvds mm -hmm. you know um, but that, that news, that news report always stuck with me. And even though I never really, you never really hear much about it, um, at all. Uh, cause like the way the news made it, even back then, like I was waiting for like a certain date and then boom, all right. go bad. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, nevertheless, I came across that, but to your point, that wasn't the, that maybe was a portion of the reason of it, but, um, I did talk about it last week, at least my end. I want to get your theory or your thoughts, I should say, on the the Godzilla size H bomb that was dropped um, in favor of your side of the argument that will plague us till uh, the bitter end. Yes. Uh, digital versus physical, and of course, what I'm talking about is the news of Warner Brothers Discovery or or Warner Brothers Discovery and PlayStation their agreement or whatever uh, ceasing, and for those who actually purchased. 
um, episodes, TV shows. Now, this is exclusive, yes. it looks like, to TV shows that were mostly reality-based, reality-based television shows. Mm -hmm. um, they no longer will have access to them at the end of 2023. Correct. So, now, again, my point first, and before we go into yours, what I had brought up was albeit forget the fact that some maybe were really good like mythbusters is probably the biggest title that i saw on the list mm -hmm. uh, as far as popularity um but as much as like a lot of the shows maybe weren't heavy hitters or whatever but i feel because of the switch now to streaming oh look at this speaking of godzilla size yeah here's godzilla good lord godzilla cat that's godzilla plus 12 yes it is oh <laughs> 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 um so you know where uh, uh maybe and I, I think i gave a number like half maybe of everyone who owned those television shows that they no longer have access to yeah i'm sure we'll probably subscribe to um uh, uh, which one is theirs warner brothers is probably i don't know if they work with uh, max or, or uh, i forget uh, I thought it was Max. It's probably Max. I think they work. Yeah, they think they did the deal yeah. with Max. So these shows are probably most likely now streaming. And with that, going to be the future. I mean, that is our future, streaming media. Um, I, I'm pretty sure a ton of those shows, maybe not all, but a ton of them are available on streaming with people having well, streaming. What do you have to say? So. <laughs> okay, well, thank well, you. you take him out of the chokehold. <laughs> and he loved you. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so I, I don't think these games, uh, these shows may be lost forever. I think just they're a different medium at this point. Well, um, it's not, it's not necessarily your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily that they're lost forever, but what they're doing is they're telling consumers who have purchased something, Hey, you actually didn't own it. We, Which you, we all knew going into this. Well, you did it. Uh, you most you people don't. did. Yeah. As I say, you do. And now don't. we do. If you read the fine print where it says, mm -hmm that you don't own it, then yeah, you knew you were, you didn't own it when you bought it. But for most people, they're going to assume like, if I'm paying for this thing, that's not a monthly subscription, then I'm paying for it to outright own it. And now we're learning. And now, you know, obviously people that are starting, way, yeah. well, people, people are starting to get hit with the hard truth of like purchasing anything digitally does not necessarily mean that you own it. So, um, right. You agree, Link. Yeah, he agrees. <laughs> so, and again, and this was always my problem with it, um, with gaming. Like I think about how uh, um, uh, with your PlayStation Plus subscription, with your Xbox Live subscription, you know, like you get those free monthly games. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, oh, okay, cool. I have I have these free monthly games, but I don't own them because if Sony decides, hey, we're going to pull these games off of our servers, then they, you know, then, uh, you know, I forfeit ownership of those um so okay. well because it's just it's a digital no 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 you know, I get it's it. digital yeah. access yeah. but that goes for every game i digitally purchase any game that i purchase digitally like i already know in the back of my head like if i'm making that monetary commitment to it it's not to permanently own it uh because they can pull it whenever they want but that's that's the thing i want to talk about though that i think is a bit some games a bit of a i don't know what's the word i'm looking for I don't want to say incorrect. I don't want to be that strong, but maybe misleading. 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 So, okay. Now, games that are online, like let's talk, like Friday the 13th, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Friday the 13th is still giving you access to play, but just not multiplayer. I'm trying to think of a game. Okay. Super Mario 35. So let's talk because that one is completely unplayable now. All right. Right. Now, granted, going into it, first of all, it was free. And so we can't complain about that. And second of all, Nintendo actually told us, hey, this is only playable. So that's a bad example as well. So right. let me put it this way. I've purchased X-Men, X-Men, the arcade game. Yes. Okay. I have it on Xbox 360. So do I. Oh, yes. It is no longer available on their their uh, uh, their shop. Okay. Right. But I can still play it because right. I downloaded it. That's the thing. For the games now tv shows is different because that thing with warner brothers i honestly don't know if it was i don't know if if you still have access if you downloaded the game the movies you probably lose access as well tv show excuse me but with the games i've there are games that i own that have been pulled from the marketplace that i'm afraid i won't be able to re-download correct but i still have access i still have access i can unplug yeah. my 360 from the internet and I still have access 
to X-Men Arcade. Right. So again, what I'm saying is it's not like they can just shut off the games that you downloaded unless they're right. online exclusive. You know, well, no, but what happens in the event, and this is and this yeah. is what happens all the time. Um, you you know, because your PlayStation library, your Xbox library, you fill that space up, right? And then yep. after you complete a game, you know, and you want to download a new game, if you're out of space, you're gonna delete. Like if I delete my game, so for mm -hmm. example, you know, I finished Hogwarts Legacy this year. Yeah. And let's say I bought it digitally, which I did not. I bought the mm -hmm. physical, of course. But if I bought it digitally, I'm like, okay, I finished the game. I want to buy something new, but I don't have space on my console. So I'm going to delete Hogwarts Legacy. I still own it. I'm just going to delete the game from mm -hmm. my hard drive so I can fit something else. Okay. Now, if Sony decides, hey, we're not going to be carrying... Hogwarts Legacy on our um, in our store anymore. So if it's no longer available on their server, if they've removed it from their server, I could never re-download that game and play it again. So I have lost access to a game I purchased. Okay. Fair point. Um, I have, and again, I, I'm not saying 100%, so don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But even going back to the Wii, I would say within the last year or two, way after the Wii Shop closed, mm -hmm. way after it closed, I was still able to re-download majority of games. Right. So I they... think they still have a server somewhere. You can't buy them. No, no, no. I get that. But what I'm saying but is... But you might be able to re-download uh, re them. Now, right. yes, that may not work for everything. Kind of like my like my Xbox game. Yeah. Even though I think when I was looking through it, I think there actually was a re-download button anyway. Yeah. But, but, but again, it... that... Go ahead. The bottom line is it's in the agreement when you buy something. It's in the agreement when you buy something online for all of these consoles mm -hmm. that they that you don't necessarily own it outright. And for that reason alone, whether they do it or not, like whether they're doing it now or not, they're giving themselves an out so that there may be a time in the future where they're going to say, hey, guess what? You paid $60 for this game. You don't have access to it anymore. And, it, and it's within their rights to do it because it's in the contract that but, you that you agree to. Yeah. So. My argument has always been, why would I want to take the risk of that for yeah. games that have a physical version? I get the ones the ones that are only available digitally, fine. Yeah. You're going to buy them at your own risk. But if I have a choice between do I want to digitally download it or do I want to have the physical copy, why wouldn't I get the physical copy? Because at least I know if I have the physical copy, they can take it off their servers whenever they want. I can always just re-download it into my console again. Correct. But also, if you keep it on your hard drive on the system, there's no need to redownload it. So right, it's but, also right, but what I'm saying is when your hard but, drive is only a gig or two. And let's face it, games that are coming out these days are you ridiculous. Know, yeah, it's like yeah, not I, only knows a, a GTA I meant, 6, I meant a terabyte or two, not a gigabyte or two, a terabyte <laughs> or two. But <laughs> that was you know, yeah, like games coming out. Like when I downloaded um, when Final Fantasy seven, when the remake came out, I yeah. think that was like. 95 or 100 it was gigs. something yeah yeah it was huge and then they had the uh and then they had the uh, integrate mm -hmm. that you downloaded so like we're talking about games now that are very easily clearing 100 gigabytes a shot and when your console only comes with uh, a terabyte of space you're only going to be able to fit seven or eight games unless you expand the, the hard drive and then but when you, you have that but you have that ability right you have that ability but again how many games then do you wind up let's let's just let's just expand it and say maybe you fit 50 to 60 games on your console let's mm -hmm. just say um and if they're all and they're all digital downloads um if you need to make space something's got to go something just has to go mm -hmm. and then if it if you delete it and then sony decides we're not going to have it on our server anymore you can never get it back and, that's, and i think that's where i that's think that's problem. what's misleading First of all, Sony or whatever company, we're using Sony as an example. We're using Sony as an example. But whatever the company, first of all, if you downloaded the game, they're not just going to like go into your system and delete it next time you boot up. So that's not the case there. No, 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 not at all. So, it's it's just, but again, if it's off their server yeah. and you don't have it on your hard drive installed, you won't be able to reinstall. But if, if it's a game, see, now to me, and then, you know, we can move on or whatever it is. I'm not saying I, I have the last word, but like to me then, if you're, purchasing and again it has to be the mindset of, of someone who purchases digital like me that's mm -hmm. in my mindset they just came out with a 1.5 te terabyte uh yeah terabyte terabyte uh one 1.5 terabyte uh micro sd cards they just came started coming out with them nice 
and I'm debating whether or not to buy one for my Switch because the Switch is what I use most often. Right. And I download, uh, obviously, all like all practically all my stuff, except for one wonderful, wonderful Christmas present I have physical. But um, no, but for the most part, it's all digital. And I keep that in mind. I'm constantly checking how like how big and how much room I have, knowing that one day down the road, I'm going to have to upgrade. And I did that with my PlayStation and I did that with my Xbox. Now, I know not everyone can do it, but it's but that's there. That's part of the deal, if you will. Yeah. When you go into it knowing that you're doing digital. Um, but yes, you know, like, for example, look, I was all in on Google. Well, I wasn't all in. But I enjoyed Google Stadia. I loved the concept of Google Stadia. Now, Google Stadia stepped up to the plate when push came to shove and they refunded everybody. Yes. You're not, you you know, Warner Brothers Discovery is not refunding anyone, or at least no. not that we know of. You never know. So, no, I, I think don't think they will. If you're going into it knowing that you want to go digital, you, you run the risks. But in my look, this could change 10 years from now. And I think I said it last week, 10 years from now, if I'm starting to lose access to some of these games that I haven't played in 30 years, you know, then maybe I'm not going to miss it. But again, that depends mm -hmm. on how I feel. That depends on the individual. But I've yet to come across a game, even as old as going back to the Wii, because that's just maybe the PS3, but the Wii, where I've yet to come across a game that I can't re-download um, unless like, you know, the company said this is only out for a, a limited time because there were some special editions that were only available for a limited time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, we'll see what the future holds, but this was a big, I admit, I, I took a shot to the chin uh, on this one, you know, a, a heavy punch uh, when sure I saw that. Take more. Uh, but, uh, but nevertheless, we'll see what happens down the road. Uh, but again, these were just some yeah. I know. I'm just curious. Crap your reality shows. I'm I'm curious. <laughs> I know. I'm curious to hear what happens when they delete something that you like and you can no longer play and how you like how that will frame we'll your perspective. But they can delete it, but then if I lose it, again, no, I'm talking about you yeah. losing a game that you purchased. I lost an entire system. So, <laughs> yeah, so but that was a, that, well, that that's a whole other yeah. story. Yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, yeah, which we'll I, see which what I, happens. I can, I can commiserate with now. <laughs> exactly. I mean, trust me, I, I'm begging that my 360 or my PS3 don't crash because I have Xbox, uh, Xbox, X Men Arcade, and the Simpsons Arcade on them respectively. Yep. Now, granted, nowadays with ROMs, that changes the story a little bit. But be that as it that's may, a whole other. Story. We'll see what happens. Yes, so, of course. All right. So, I want to get your 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 thought on that, uh, which is well, my good. thought on that. My thought on that is the I, same. It's a, it's also the reason why I bought uh, <laughs> I bought uh, Batman the animated series collection on Cyber Monday. <laughs> oh, recently? Yeah. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize you bought that. Great series. I, I just well, yeah, because I've been watching it on H uh, on a uh, HBO Max. I think it's yes. On. Um, and then I realized I was like, Hey, I should just get the physical copy because they can pull that whenever they want. And it was like 30 bucks for the whole set. That's ah, not bad at all. I think I bought that for Apple TV. So, yeah. Oh, so then you'll lose it when Apple gets rid of it. I will not lose it. No way. Good oh, and this is the last thing I want to mention. Then we'll move on. Oh, I, no, 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 no. Only because I, I, I couldn't remember the company. I mentioned last week, I was seeing advertisements from a, a, a one of the movie studios saying, and they literally say purchase and keep forever. Mm -hmm. digital or disc and it was universal that's why i just wanted to throw that out because i saw it was an ad for the, the grinch well uh, good Jim for grinch uh, so good for universal for actually saying that but and and i wonder if like they change their fine print or whatever but again i just yeah, wanted to throw it out there because i mentioned it last week so all right so when their server crashes we can sue them <laughs> <laughs> never i've yet to lose anything so all right. So um did and you then didn't buy we, any of those reality shows. What no, I did not though. Miss Mythbusters, I, I could have bought. I might have an episode uh, or two. Uh the last thing I want to talk about that some people saw my plight on uh social media, if you saw. Mm -hmm. Uh first of all, I am now open to a whole new world of gaming because my after what a year and a half, maybe two years, mm -hmm. uh pre-order, my analog duo yes. showed up last week. Congratulations. I was so happy. Uh thank you very much. I was Supposed to have the delivery between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, and then uh -huh. I sat there staring at the live UPS tracker until it arrived at about to make sure it went to your house. 7 07 p.m. This guy drove up past my block, down past my block, one over one going. I don't know what pattern. Don't, he was you, don't you love it when they do that? I don't get it. 
But I finally got it. I got the duo, and I got to say, first and foremost, nice. I love it. It is awesome. Uh, I got stacking games. I'm just going to mention a couple that I own, but I've been going through them, playing them. But I do want to mention right off the bat because um, uh, our friend Aaron, who listens to us, cable mo- uh, cable box mod mm-hmm. underscores on between in between those, asked me about it, and the system mocks me. The system wants to just. So on the side of the system is a controller LED light. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, it's you can't see. Forget it. I was going to try. try yeah, like, try and figure yeah, out which one like it is. There. So Where, where's um, Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a controller LED light, and it's you know it tells you if a controller is connected or if it's pairing. And when it's blinking, it's in pairing mode. All right, cool, no problem. I'm going full wired, right? So and it will take. I have a Hyperkin. Um, uh, TurboGrafx-16 controller. It'll take mm-hmm. an original PC Engine controller, unless you have the adapter for the TurboGrafx, nice. because it's the smaller connector. And it will actually take the TurboGrafx-16 mini controllers, the USB controllers. Oh, very nice. So very cool. All right, cool. So whatever, I played it. It's cool. Now, where I sit, I sit here as well for work when I'm working from home, and the system is off to my left. And I can see the lights on steady right now because I have a controller plugged into it. My system's off. There's no games in it. But when everything's unplugged... It just blinks constantly blinking. Uh, and when I work, I have all my lights off. A, I don't want to pay the electric bill. And B, it just, you know, the sun's coming up and I'll get that light. But yeah. while it's still dark in the morning and when it gets dark at night, it, it's, I just, bl- it's blinking I, yeah, at you. I get this little and 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 when the Christmas lights are off and everything. Yeah. This so did you did you ever see the Twilight? It's own episode. <laughs> the one when the, the duo kept blinking at the guy? No. No. Did you ever see the Twilight Zone episode with the guy who developed a, a gambling addiction with a slot machine? No. Um, and then like he started hallucinating and the slot machine showed up in his hotel room <laughs> and the light on the top would keep blinking at him. <laughs> and then the slot machine would say his name. Oh. But, but, the, but the light blinking was like constant. No, uh, I, I, was, so, I gotta see that now. Yeah, you should watch that because that's what's happening with your uh, duo. So I don't know. <laughs> it probably has said my name. I'm just ignoring it. Um, <laughs> play me. Play. Um, so, okay. So it's blinking. And when it's blinking again, it's in pairing mode. So now I'm like, all right, nothing's plugged into it. And there's no video games. I mean, there's no games in there. So yep. is it stuck in pairing mode? So I immediately emailed Analog. And much to their... Um, um, uh, kudos to them nope kudos kudos okay they got back to me really quickly actually they got back to me like within maybe like 10 15 minutes i was shocked i wasn't expecting to hear from them for like three days three working days that is Mm -hmm. um and then we actually were going back and forth in the email chain so like they asked like what's the problem i messaged back and again like they're responding like within maybe 20 minutes was the longest that it took them. maybe a half hour i'll give them that um to the point where they like can send us a video of what it's doing so kudo even i mean look for the you know the insane amount of shipping that we pay you i'm very happy that you're quick with your uh with well your, that's, uh, customer that's why service. you pay a lot in shifting probably so they, so they can have customer probably. service so long story short i had to um uh, there was a day one uh firmware update which is fine i got that updated did all this other stuff and then now as much as i praise them i have to kind of then be like really this is a solution you gave me mm-hmm. so they were like look try pairing a Bluetooth controller. I'm like, I don't want to pair a Bluetooth controller. The whole idea is I want to play wired. Right. They're like, just do it, you know, amuse us. I was like, all right, whatever. So I paired a Bluetooth controller and it stopped blinking. Like it actually turned off, which I wanted to do. I'm like, okay, it worked. I paired a controller, it turned off. Not the solution I'm looking for. Right. But they said, we will forward this to our, you know, proper team tech order. support yeah. so hopefully something i can't be the only one that's going through this now also i get it it's on the side of the system when i'm sitting in front of it i don't see it but right. when i'm working i do see it yeah so yes. so it's, it wants you to play it turned off and then i played played a game you know used a wired controller unplug the wired controller turn the system off and now blink 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 it started doing it again well, why don't you just get like put a piece of tape over it or something? As you know, someone they actually sell tape like that, which I find hysterical because yeah. you really just buy electrical tape, but they sell specific tape that blocks or dims those lights. Just just buy electrical tape. It's not and all joking aside, um, and yes, I, I you know, 
I might be pumping up the story a little bit. But all joking aside, it's more like I feel like, A, it shouldn't be doing it, period. So right. let's fix that problem. And B, I'm like, well, if it's constantly blinking, granted, I mean, and it's not, you know, I'm, it's not like 50 cents a blink. I'm not worried about that. But just, you know, I, no, want, it off. I want the light yeah, off. Yeah, well, I'm just so. saying, put a piece of electrical tape over it until you get a firmware update that fixes it. For now, I, I'll just, when I have a controller plugged into it, it just stays on. So I'm like, I'll deal with that. Okay. So for now, I have the controller plugged in, but I just found it funny. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, stop blanking. Staring at it, yelling at the stupid system. Mm -hmm. No. Well, but, just, um, just don't throw it in the trash. Yeah, no, no, no. I loved it. No, beyond that, oh my God, it's so beautiful. If you have an analog pocket, the analog OS, it's just mm -hmm. like the pocket OS. So, well, ah. it's analog OS. So it runs the same. Nice. Some games that I have, just to name a few, um, and a lot of these are the ones you got me from Japan. Um, uh, a bunch of uh, shoot 'em ups like Sidearms, uh, Final Zone Two. Well, Final Zone Two is not as much shoot 'em up. Um, Super Proteus. Oh my god, I love my Proteus nice. series. Um, oh, of course, the game that I bought in anticipation of the Polymega, but later on bought it. <laughs> waited for this thing. My Jim Powers in Mutant. Ah, uh, very nice. Yes. So finally got to play that. Very hey. fun game. And then uh, another game. I the most the game I probably played the most right now is for the PC Engine. Batman. Nice PC Engine. Yes. So, nice. uh, and I got a couple bonks and everything. So I got a good handful right. of stuff. And of course, um, uh, and this I played a lot too, because uh, I will plug it right now. Godzilla minus one greatest movie of 2023. Uh, Godzilla. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Better than Super Mario Brothers. You know what? As far as a movie movie is concerned, I, I did enjoy it story wise mm -hmm. much better. And so wow. It hit me emotionally differently. This it, Godzilla minus one is like an emotional roller coaster. That's what, no, no, I've heard that. That's what yeah. I've heard. So, and for cool. me, yeah, it did, it did nudge out Super Mario for the year overall. The year. Still, Super Mario Brothers movie, but for the year, right. Godzilla. Okay. Um, and that, and then this is a really cool fighter. This Godzilla, uh, very PC, nice CD. So, um, it runs beautifully. Uh, I've yet to come across any issues. God only knows what people are saying. I'm sure there's issues out there, but I haven't seen any. The only issue I have, but it's the same issue I have with a, with a, your PS5 and my Xbox Series X. Um, I hate, and they've been around forever. I hate CD drives, disc drive, Blu-ray players that suck the disc in. Oh, uh, yeah. Always drives me nuts because my original PS3, that first model PS3, the one that you have, Ant. Yep. That sucks in the disc. And I hate to say it, mine, which is actually, oh, I wonder if it's an issue with yours. Because it was an issue with a lot of them. When you go, either if you put it in a little bit or if you let it pop out a little bit, it'll just spin in place halfway in, halfway out. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it doesn't really destroy. I don't think no. it, I don't think it destroyed any discs. I haven't I haven't spins. noticed that on the PS3, but yeah. maybe I'll I'll but, fiddle um, with it and see if it happens. Because but know, I just I have it hooked up. <laughs> but I just hate those those drives. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a door on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but that's fair. Nevertheless, that's my only complaint. Beyond that, right. oh, I'm loving it, and I love Good. the Turbo Graphics. Yep. Uh, I just need to buy the, well, I mean, I have the, yeah, the I, mean, retro I, have, freak. I have the retro freak, but uh, 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 as I hooked everything up in my new office space, um, it made me want to uh, get the modules for the poly mega and just put everything in one place now. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. No, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just easier. No, it's worth it. It's easier. Totally. Uh, so I may pull the trigger on that, but like a little bit at a time because the modules are just available. So oh, I can yeah, just yeah, get them. Yeah. You know, I can get them as I wish. Yeah. And that uh, was my that was my original reason for getting the polymega. One yeah. footprint. Yeah, exactly. So uh so I'm definitely gonna look into that, although I will still keep my retro freak. I won't throw it out. Okay. Uh can always uh I see I can always what I can do is I can always hook it up near my computer so I can record stuff off of it. That too, yes. Yeah, which is also cool. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you like your duo. Me too. Me too. Um, so but, that was basically uh, about it for me. All right. So shall we move on to uh I think so news and stuff? Let's do it, my friend. In a while. In yeah, a while. because I don't do news. So no, you don't do news. I dropped news. one so, of my hue cards. Oh no. Yeah, I know you don't do news, and when I travel, no news gets covered. <laughs> um so We've got uh, three retro birthdays to talk about Ooh, really quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, two of them I'm going to bring up. One of them you will bring up. Oh, okay. Um, so the two retro birthdays I have are actually uh, going back to 1998, so 25 years. 
Oh my god, ninety eight is twenty five years. Yeah, ninety eight. That's what bugs now. me about this uh, part of the show. Well, well, in a, in a couple of weeks, it will be twenty six years. <laughs> so <laughs> true, very true. Um, and then yeah, nineteen ninety nine will be twenty five <laughs> years old. Um, so two games, one for the N sixty four. Um, uh, I I bought this game. I was really excited about it, and then I played it and hated it. Oh no, because uh, first person shoot, first person oh. perspective games are not my thing. Uh, but uh, I wanted to just give it a quick shout out because I think it was the first game to come out based on this TV show. I think I could be wrong, but it is the 25th retro birthday for South Park on the N64. Oh my gosh, such a terrible game. Yep, throwing snowballs at uh, killer turkeys. It was um, very weird. Yeah, it was a very strange game. Uh, but the other retro birthday to bring up and a very monumental one too, especially after um, its sequel won game of the year at the uh, game awards this year 1998 was the 25th retro it's the 25th retro birthday of the original baldur's gate on windows oh wow yeah okay so 25 years of baldur's gate and i owned the original baldur's gate uh, on windows i did i and i had it with my cd collection for the longest time and i was really excited because you know i bought this old Mm -hmm. pc and everything like that and it's not there anymore wow so it's almost like it was removed from the server. Yes, except it was removed from my collection, and I want to know who <laughs> took it so I can track them down John Wick style. <laughs> Ooh, nice. That's right. They killed his dog. You took my game. <laughs> oh, my God. I told my parents to watch that movie, and I did not tell them about that part of the movie. Oh, God. not happy with me. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So those are the two retro birthdays I have. Larry, you Very had cool. brought one up before we uh, started the show. Yes. Actually dropped today, 30 years ago. We're recording on December 17th, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. Uh, 30 years ago, this epic series jumped into the, at the time, Next Generation Mega Man X. Wow. Debuts on the Super Nintendo. 1993. 93. Such an epic version of the game. Such a different version of the game. Because I'm sure a lot of us were like, wow, already up to 10. We just had Mega Man 6. Did you did you own X originally? Um, I don't think I got into the X ones because I gave up on Mega Man somewhere around <laughs> four. Fair enough. Okay. I think the Mega Man 4 um, I stopped. I'm- what was also cool were the power-ups that you get you can find in the game. Power up your helmet, your boots, uh, your shields, and stuff like that. And then, of course, the the hidden ability to um, to um, upgrade to a, a Hadouken in Mega Man X. Oh yeah, you can actually get a Hadouken. So, um, which I thought was always very cool. Um, and then, of course, I can't remember the full names of the Mavericks, so forgive me. But nevertheless, it was a very cool game, very cool jump to Super Nintendo, where eventually even the original Mega Man series made it to Super Nintendo. Yes. Um, with Mega Man 7. So, um, but yeah, definitely check it out. If you haven't played Mega Man X at this point, what are you waiting for? It's been released 100 times. Uh, currently on that Mega Man Legacy, Mega Man X Legacy collection. Yep. Definitely well worth it. All right. Very cool. So happy retro birthday to Mega Man X as well. All right. So I thought we'd start with some of the the sad news first. And E3, E3 officially announced this week that uh, they will no longer, they will no longer be going on after over like two decades. Yeah, right. uh, Of the expo that used to give us all the information about upcoming games. Now, I don't know if it, if it's, um, I don't know if it's because uh, the game awards have kind of usurped it because we, uh, well, we we don't we even heard, on the game awards. I was just gonna say we we heard news coming out of the game awards this year that they're not they're not exactly game awards anymore. Yeah, oh, no, I think it was like um, literally like twenty minutes of actual awards. Yeah, and everything else was world premieres. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if that's maybe they're kind of taking over what E three mm-hmm. used to do or whatever. But uh, you know, again, sad thing, um, or just um, they, well, probably the reason why E three is going away. Nintendo does their own directs. Sony does their state of play. Oh, totally. Microsoft does their whatever. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, their their press conferences. Um, uh, Microsoft does their. Please watch us, please. Honestly, <laughs> world premiere. That's all I remember so, from an Xbox one. Yeah, world so, premiere. Yeah, oh, so I, I think maybe as each company has taken it uh, on their own now, yeah. and not only that, but they make they make their announcements more you know regularly. It's not like a we have to wait for this one event for the year. Well, not only that, but I think all I i mean, which will probably be part of when you were looking into this, the pandemic just ruined it. Well, and yeah, when I say it, ruined yes. it, meaning that's what I think. I don't remember someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, un, Unfun Gamer. 
But um, I think Nintendo stopped doing E3 before the pandemic. Like they might have started uh, just going direct, like in 2018, maybe. 2019, maybe, maybe, maybe. But definitely when they came back in 21, that's when I think I remember. I think 2021 they had like Sony was like out on like someone's like back porch or whatever the way yeah. it was set up. Um, and then yeah, and then Microsoft just kind of doing their own thing. So I think when I say the pandemic killed it, meaning that's what gave these companies, hey, look, we can just produce stuff in. We'll just do it ourselves and yeah. just do it on the internet. Because being a show that was ba like industry only, which is a lot of expos that mm -hmm. are industry only, and then opening up to the public, what like 2017, I think. Um, 2017 or 18. Yeah. Tw um, you know. It, and then the way the public is anyway, they're just streaming everything on the internet regardless. So yeah. that's what that's what I think. I think the pandemic yeah, no, the no, no. It, in the coffin. I, I, I will agree with that. I think that's exactly what happened. Um I, I would like to give just a uh a special shout out to just one of the most memorable moments yeah, sure. from E3. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm not talking about the horrible Jamie Kennedy interviews in two thousand something. Um <laughs> but um but gotta go back to nineteen ninety five. Which was, and again, at the time when Sega and that was when Sega, show. yeah, when Sega and Nintendo were battling over dominance, and mm -hmm. Sony was just about to give birth, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Sega's president, you know, Tom Kalinske, comes out and starts talking about the Sega Saturn because the Sega Saturn was dropping in the fall. E3 mm -hmm. used to be in May, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know if it was it in started May, in May. In yeah, May. yeah, it used to start. It, it used to be in Actually, May. for a long time. It was in May. For a long time, it was in May. Um, Kalinsky came out. Um, Sega had announced that um, the Sega Saturn was going to ship. It was going to ship to stores in the fall. Uh, mm -hmm. Came out, announced the price tag of three ninety nine, and then said that they basically lied to everybody. And the Sega Saturn was available in stores that day. I wouldn't and, say they lied. Maybe just well, fibbed. They fibbed. <laughs> and a fib is a lie. So they lied. Um, and the Sega Saturn was in stores that day, which, you know, caused a big uproar. Everybody's excited. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and then after after he was done, Sony comes out. I forget the guy who comes out representing Sony. The, uh, Phil Spector. Right? Well, I don't know. Back then, it may not have been Phil Spector. But, but whoever uh, it was. Oh, no. I'm yeah, Sony. That's, that but was Xbox. Sony comes out right after that. And they said, oh, you know, you know, whatever with Sega. That's great. Uh, yeah. Our console is coming out and it's going to be $100 cheaper. So $299. Uh, and right there, so basically, well, yeah, they just dropped the gauntlet and been like, oh, that's cute. Yours is three and 99. Ours is two ninety nine. <laughs> um, so and not only that, like they their uh, their launch titles were a lot stronger than Sega's. Oh, OK. Cause, yeah. Because if you yeah, remember, true. Like, that was true, well, yeah. the problem with the problem with the Sega Saturn was I think it was like they chose not to come out with a Sonic game. At mm -hmm. launch. Um, and actually, I don't know. Saturn never really wound up getting a Sonic game. Uh, mm, mm, I don't remember exactly. I don't know like the full a, history. A true, of I know what you're talking about like a proper, no, 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 you know, like a proper, you know, um, Saturn exclusive. Like Sonic Nights game. into Dreams was their big. It was. was it was. One. Yeah. Um. A lot so of anyway, ports. a lot of ports. Yeah. So anyway, um. So rest in peace, E3. Sorry to see you go. Unfortunately, it was inevitable. Um. Uh. And that. And don't worry. You know, I, I would tell E3 not to worry about it. The Game Awards are going to follow soon if they keep it up. So. I, I. The the writings on the wall. The Game Awards from a couple of years ago. Even I saw. Yeah. Like, so. Uh, yeah. So we may we may be seeing that. Uh. I'm I'm perfectly happy with them going away anyway. Just uh, give me my video game Hall of Fame inductions every year. That's yes. Hey. Hey. You're closer to there now. How far are you from there? Uh. Where is from it? the strong Rochester. Oh. I. I should be just uh two three hours. I think. There we go. Yeah, you can do. There you go. You can attend it. Uh, who are you, sir? Don't worry about yeah, it. I will attend it. <laughs> well, actually, if you if you come visit me, we can make a trip. <laughs> you can attend it. So, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> hey, little fun fact that I didn't realize. So, E3's uh, been in L.A. Well, been in California, yep. L.A., Santa Monica. Um, twenty nine, uh, twenty twenty one was online, but for two years, ninety seven to ninety eight, it was in Georgia. Yes, random. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Well, the, the L.A. Convention Center was was booked, but still. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, very must have been the Monster Truck Week. Oh yes, awesome. Um, I did. I did go to a Monster Truck event once in L.A. <laughs> I went when I was like twelve. I think is the only. No, I might have been younger than that. I I went, I went. I went because the company was pitching us. They wanted our. They wanted us to I represent. Think I remember you telling business. me about that. Yeah. Oh my That's god. Such uh, a blast. That I did not enjoy it. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Other retro news, Larry. Yes. You had sent this to me since every 
console, every video game company seems to be doing this now. Uh, the Xbox has now uh, Honestly. hooked up with Mister M S T R, not M S T R, yeah. not not the other Mister, yeah, not the other Mister, but uh, they've hooked up with Mister to release Xbox themed watches. And everyone's getting a watch. Yep, so you can get a nice white version for eighty dollars, or yeah. if you want the OG original black version of the Xbox, you can get that for four hundred dollars. Yes, and I'm looking at the website limited just... edition. A limited edition limited edition ultra matte black automatic timepiece yes so that's four hundred dollars that's still available figures the cheap eighty dollar one is uh out of stock it's so that's but it's it's a beautiful one and what i love about the the matte black one is you can actually it's like behind the xbox logo is clear so you can actually see the watch gears behind uh, it which is cool which is very cool i mean the white one's gorgeous don't get me wrong but the black one pops so but yeah everyone's getting in on the watches so we'll see what comes next Yes, we will. Time will tell. Ah, oh, moving on. Um, all right, a bunch of other news to throw out here. Uh, nope, that was my E3 news. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, uh, this was interesting. Um, recently, uh, a fan decided mm -hmm. that it would be a great idea to take um, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX okay. and, po and port it to the PC so people could play Link's Awakening on their PC. Which is weird because it already got ported technically to the Switch. Right. It got ported to the Switch, yeah. but he wanted to port it to the PC. Okay. Um, and not only that, but there was a, a it was an HD version that was created. And mm -hmm. I actually saw instructions online on how to how to oh. get it to work on your okay. Steam Deck. Oh boy. Which was super cool. Um, I don't know how long I don't know how long it was it, it was up <laughs> and available, but Nintendo <laughs> shut that down fast. <laughs> Faster than you can say, Link's Awakening DX on the PC. Yep. So the uh, so the fan made the fan made uh, the fans website now it. has a has the following sentence on there. When <laughs> Screw you, go, you, Nintendo. When you go Period. to get Link's Awakening for the PC, the game's files have been suspended for copyright or trademark claim. So, <laughs> duh. So I don't even know able... why people try nowadays. But you know what? It, he probably did it as a labor of love, he or she, um, and he wanted to share it with the world. That's the problem. As yeah. soon as you make it public, Nintendo's like, yes. bing, 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 bing. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, Nintendo's lawyers strike again. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're good. They're just fast. Oh, they are. They're amazing. All right. Uh, more Nintendo news. Um, it was recently uh, announced, or maybe it's just a milestone that they hit. Uh, the Nintendo Switch's lifetime U.S. unit sales just recently passed Xbox 360. Oh, there you go. So they're just they're nice. climb, they're climbing the charts. Uh, what's the top? The so what's that put them? So the third Switch, or fourth? The, the Switch is now third to the Nintendo DS. Okay. And the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 is number one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's By a lot. Hotcakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as of September 30th, the Switch has now sold more than 132 million units. Good for you. I'm assuming that's probably both the original and the OLED. Yeah. They yeah, probably combine that. Yeah. It would definitely be. Uh, cool. Very cool. Very cool. I like to hear that. Yep. So uh, so it just keeps climbing. Mm -hmm. It keeps climbing. All right. Moving on from that. Uh, let's see. We got we got one other. Let's see. Okay. My other Nintendo news. Oh, um, we were talking about this the other day uh, online, but um there was some rare Japanese TV footage that was found. Oh, I heard about this. Um, relating to Super Mario 64, which came out in 1996. Now, a couple of years ago, it was discovered that in the coding of the game, there was actual coding for Luigi. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Luigi got cut from the game. <laughs> However, um, there's been some video that, re that surfaced that actually showed Luigi as a playable character in Super Mario 64. That's so cool. They actually did have him working in there. Um now we're a, talking it was from it was from a uh it was from a convention called Space World 95. So not even E3. <laughs> no, not E3. Uh this was this was specifically in Japan. Yeah. So it was in Japan, uh Space World 95. And they had Luigi as a playable character, but they took him out due to memory issues. There just wasn't enough space to keep him in there. But Fair they enough. did have they did have him working. 
which is very interesting. I mean, later we got yeah. Luigi in Super Mario 64 DS, but yeah, to have him, yeah. to would have had him in the original Super Mario 64 would have been really cool, especially as a multiplayer. Yeah. But what's interesting is that um, he was removed from it. Miyamoto did say they plan to introduce him in the 64 disk drive version. Ah. But, we all know, but we all know what happened with the, the disk drive yes. version. So hopefully analog will allow the connection to the disk drive. Yes. But when uh, Mario 64 DS came out, obviously, Luigi. Yeah, that uh, was Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario. And I had that game yes. for a little while, but it was so tough to play because the original DS didn't have a thumbstick. Mm -hmm. So you actually had to use the touchpad as a thumbstick. Oh, yeah. Very annoying. Very. But later on, the system came with a thumbstick. I never really bought, I never re bought the game. I got to repurchase that, actually. I sold it back because I, I was not enjoying it. But nevertheless, the original N64, yeah, the N64 disk drive would have been awesome to add as Luigi on to there. But it definitely would have been. Actually, one of my, if I ever make another trip to Japan, I might like get my hands on a, a disk drive, disk drive just, nice. just to have it in my collection. That'd be cool. Yeah. Or you get that, actually that in a Japanese N64. I don't have that. That would help as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Moving on. More news. Um, so, this was interesting also for the switch there's a new game coming to the switch eShop on december 21st and i wanted to bring it up because specifically it's a game that i know you like you already own it um but the uh, game itself feed oh yes will be available on the switch eShop december 21st really that's yes. cool yeah great game it was a packing game for the uh, uh sega cd uh, uh, it was no, Sil no, 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 no. I'm thinking of something else. Silfeed was originally released on the PC 88 yes, yes, in 1986. Yes. Uh, it eventually came out on the Sega CD. You are correct, it did. not not as a packing game, but it came in as no, a, no, it was I was thinking of Sulfies. Yes, that's what you were thinking of. But Silfeed yes. now, um, if you've never played it, there, Larry, if you're watching us, Larry's showing it off his copy on the Sega CD. But you oh, can now, well, you can buy it on. Your switch on December twenty one. Okay, my, my my repro copy of Little Samson of Little Samson, uh, who Total we talked about earlier. Yep. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting, uh, speaking of game availability, this was mm -hmm. a little random one. Uh, remember the uh, uh, the Amiga A five hundred Mini? Yes, the, I have it. Still haven't hooked it up yet. <laughs> yeah, the Mini and the Mini that I want to add to my collection that I still haven't. Uh, every time it goes on sale, I I, I want to pull the trigger and then I don't, and now I'm waiting for another sale. <laughs> it should be coming up soon. Um, yeah, it, it, it's what I it's I do that. I'm doing that with the A500 Mini and the Friday the 13th Blu-ray box set from Shop Factory. <laughs> How do you not already have that? Well, no, I have a box set, but this is a special Blu-ray box set from Shop Factory that has a whole bunch of extras on it. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. Yeah, cool. so uh, and it was on sale and I didn't pull the trigger. It was like 30% off and I didn't do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was really bummed. Anyway, so the Amiga, uh, the A5, the Amiga Mini Mm -hmm. is getting a new firmware update but with this firmware update they're also giving you an additional game for the mini really uh and you will be able to play time bandit on that's cool 500 mini so if you and uh if you've never played time bandit it's a very um it's a very well received game yeah it's got like uh uh it got very high scores it's a top view shooter so mm -hmm. you'll like mm -hmm. it a lot yeah. uh kind of looks like uh if you look at it, it kind of you know, it reminds me of Smash TV a little bit. It, well, very quick when I first look at it, like very quickly, it reminded me of Gauntlet. Uh, Gauntlet's another way yeah, to look at but it. But I can too. see Smash yeah. TV as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so if you have an A500 Mini, look for that firmware update. How do you, where do you even update it? Uh, I do not know. All right. Well, we'll um, figure that out later. Uh, you, and you, you had mentioned this last week on um, the show, but I wanted to bring it up because I think they added some more titles to this but sega recently announced that they were going to be creating more games for oh, certain yes, franchises yes. right yeah and i know they mentioned like two or three i think um golden axe was listed mm -hmm. uh, streets of rage was listed but recently uh uh december 6th it was december 6th sega um trademarked eight more of their titles Ooh. And a couple of them are from last week's announcements, but the full list of uh, what yeah. they just trademarked: Alex Kidd, okay, Afterburner, Ooh. Cr Crazy Taxi, okay, we knew that, yeah, House of the Dead, oh, Out wow, 
Outrun, <gasps> Ooh. Shinobi, oh, Streets of Rage, and, Ooh. Super, and Super Monkey Ball. Wow. Um, no, those oh. are all. Wow, I didn't realize. Yeah, like House of the Dead, um, um, Super Monkey Ball, which I never yeah. owned, but I, I've played some demos. Very so, fun. Yeah, so I don't officially know if that means they're just getting ready to like re-release older stuff, or if they're like uh, these are no. all ones that they're planning to do more. I would imagine Newer if games. it's something linked with that announce the original announcement, then I'm sure it's going to be new entities. Yeah. So, entities. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Cause I know they also mentioned like they mentioned Golden Axe. They mentioned Jet Set Radio. Oh, so, so yeah. Those are in the original. Yeah. Golden Axe. If that Golden Axe that they showed for a split second, if it looks like that, kind of like an over the shoulder, like beat yep. them up. Oh my God. It's going to be. Amazing. I love Golden Axe. Always yeah. have. Yep. All right. Uh, a couple more things and then we're out of here. Um, uh, we talked about this, uh, last week on chat, but, um, I sent you a link over about, um, Atari, Atari and Polymega. You know how they announced that yes. uh, collaboration? Oh, yeah. I was shocked to see this. Yeah, yeah. But had no, had no idea that Atari was like in a partnership with, <laughs> yeah. with play Maggi to the point where they own almost 50% of the company. Uh, we might as well just call them Atari at this point. Well, no, because it, uh, Play Magic still owns the majority. So, how is that if Atari has fifty three percent of the shares? They have a non controlling stake of fifty three percent of the non, shares. That sounds like nonsense to me. Not non controlling means they do not control it. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but just interesting, just interesting no, very interesting that. though. Um, and you know what? Smart on Atari's part. Look, Atari's trying to get in the game, but I like what they're kind of like. They're, like they're, they're doing they're, they're it. Making, they're making some good moves. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Making some smart moves. And uh, like I said, I'm totally in for getting the Polymega. Uh, uh, I forgot what they call it. Poly, not Polymega Life. I think it was something called something else. That will hook into the VCS. Like yes. all joking aside, because then I can play some other systems, disc based systems. Like, for example, uh, I don't know if you have it in the news, but I'll throw it out there for anyone. And, and you're included in this who have a Neo Geo CD and mm -hmm. the Polymega plays Neo Geo CD. Yes, it does. There's a um a company over in France, I want to say, or in Europe somewhere, Pixel Hearts, pixelheart.eu. And they uh, just came out with a, I'll call it a collection of brand new Neo Geo CD games. Nice. And um, I mean, I'm trying to pull it up right now just to name a couple, but of course now I can't find it. But what um, what's their name? Pixel Hearts? Pixelhearts.eu. Okay. Here it is. Neo Geo. Neo Geo. Um, that did not work for me. P I X E L H E A R T dot E U. Oh, okay. I thought there was an S on the end of that. Oh, I was going to say it wrong. Um, oh, there we go. Neo Geo CD. Oh, uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Some of the, I mean, for like a brand new game called uh, Punky Circus is yep. coming out. Um, and then um, like Andros Dunos. Um, uh, Battle Flip Shot Neo Geo, and these are legit, and they'll play nice. on original Neo Geo CDs and the new ones, and they're priced very well. The price, I think, they're 24, 24 90 euros. Yeah, twenty five um, euros, basically. I think they're like thirty bucks U.S. dollars. But in any event, yeah, it's not bad for a game. Check them out. I'm very happy with the games I bought. If you buy Dreamcast games, be careful because they only play on Dreamcasts that were made before November of two thousand. So, but, I think I think I still have my original nine nine ninety nine. So. There you go. Nice. Uh, so nevertheless, definitely check them out. But okay. um, but again, with the with the uh, Polymega hitting mm -hmm. Atari and Atari really buying into it. And remember, Atari also mentioned they're going to put out a module for the twenty six hundred. They'll probably just slap the twenty six hundred plus into a module. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so very cool. Very cool. All right. about Atari. Yes. Very cool. Um, and then uh, la uh, last two bits of news. Uh, they were actually related to one another. OK. Uh, re relates to the um, Video Game History Foundation. Oh, okay. I like them. So, yes, so do I. So um, they have recently released a video on YouTube uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2's Lost Levels. I saw, I didn't look into this, but I saw something about yeah, it. Yeah, so apparently, like, um, they, they, everybody knew that there were levels that got cut off of this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why, and they go they go through it in the video. Three designers of the original game um, mm -hmm. are interviewed for the video. Okay, but the reason why they got rid of a bunch of the levels is because Sonic Two was originally supposed to include time travel mechanics, wh which is what they did in Sonic CD. Mm -hmm. And once they removed, once they lost that aspect of it, they cut a bunch of levels out of the game. So. Okay. 
yeah so the first like like one of the first level stages um that were cut were cyber city zone winter zone wood zone Ooh. sand showered zone <laughs> um so yeah. just i guess i don't know if that's all of them also would make the game game. longer it sounds like it would definitely make the game longer. Yeah. So just interesting to see. So uh, if you want to yeah, see some, cool. if you want to see some information on that, go to YouTube. Check out the Video Game History Foundation. And speaking of the Video Game History Foundation, um, they've recently announced a new video on their YouTube channel mm-hmm. that their library tools will be made available to researchers, academics, and video game enthusiasts in the future online. Okay, very cool. So there's going to be a um, digital archive of all of its materials, which they yes. haven't had yet. So they're going to have a full remote digital library where you can access the collection for free from anywhere wow. in the world. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, kind of like kind of like another version of archive.org because uh, basically, yeah, version of that. Yeah, but um, but you'll be able to see all of that on the Video Game History Foundation's um, site. Yeah, I've seen uh, them. Um, I, I think like if you order from Limited Run, I think you can donate to them or something like that. So um, very cool. I like I like them. They're doing a good job preserving history. Um, so yeah, definitely very cool to hear about that. Yeah, very cool. Okay, and I'm going to share one last thing only oh, okay. because there was a related there was a related article at the bottom of this, and it just made me smile. <laughs> and I, and I know you'll like it. Um, a lost screenshot of a of forgotten married with children video game surfaces online really i had no idea um it looks like i yep somebody posted a screenshot of married with children it was it was a point and click adventure kind of <laughs> like uh, maniac <laughs> Ninja. and the screenshot is of the uh bundy living room and it looks it looks like an image of it looks like peg bundy oh my god look at this oh you, you found it i'm pulling it up yeah so uh <laughs> now i'm just like I'm very curious as to what the game was going to be about. This is from a magazine too. Yeah, it's a magazine. Yeah, it's a magazine showing a screenshot of the Married with Children game. And now, now that I've seen it, I want I want a Married with Children game. Not for nothing, Peggy's stacked. Yeah, she's definitely <laughs> stacked. Oh my god, so, this is hysterical. Oh, and then like it says, um, the interfacing computer. Like they're saying, uh, here's a quote from the magazine. Yeah. Um, where it says, as simple as Lucasfilm's Maniac Mansion, so the player can direct the characters as easily as Peg manipulates Al's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, that would have been a fun game to have. Oh wait a minute, I'm I'm just I'm getting more for so I'm looking on X. I'm looking at uh, at yep. I don't know who he is, so forgive me. Um, at Frank Cifaldi, F R A N K C I F A L D I. Frank Cifaldi complete. Um, okay. He 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 comments a little bit more. Uh, this was announced for the NES, but um, it wasn't in development, but it was announced. So we would oh. have almost gotten this on the, the NES as well. Oh, interesting. So that's yeah, that's that's wild. All right, that would have been. Uh, I'm sorry, that would have been a funny. I I love games based off of shows. So even wow, this if, guy even when they're crappy, he really kind of almost deep dives in. Like if you follow the the thread of this one post, I'll put the link up underneath. Okay, but like he comments a lot on different things about this game and where it was going, where it could have been, and stuff like that. Oh, cool. So very very interesting. Very very cool. Yeah. Um, and now that now that it's getting some uh, some play out there, let's get some fans to you know finish the game we we almost we almost got a new season of married with children too recently i know so uh and uh with that no that completes retro news all right and with that ant it's been a little while where can they find us i don't know where uh, just on the internet really at this uh, okay point. you guys can find us on facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast on instagram at retro gamers podcast on twitter x at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube at Retro Gamers Podcast, or you can email us at email at theretrogamers.com. And don't forget to hit subscribe, like, ring the bell, thumbs up, whatever mm. app it is. Share us, share yeah. your friends and family, get us out there. Um, and with that, we will call it. We will call it. Larry, um, well, we'll make it official. Have a very Merry Christmas. I know next week will be our Christmas That's... episode, but it's the day after Christmas. That's okay. So have a very Merry Christmas. And next week also is the last episode of the year. It is. That's wild. Yeah. So we'll do something. 
Uh, yeah, we'll do something. We have no, we, You can see we don't plan that far out. <laughs> That's how I roll. Let's just put it that way. All right, excellent. Well, we'll see you next week. And have a good one. You have a good one as well. And we'll catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.